Float is a CSS position property. To understand its purpose and origin, we can look to print design. In a print layout, images may be set into the page so that the text wraps around them as needed. This is commonly and appropriately called text wrap. In page layout programs, the boxes that hold the text can be told to honor the text wrap or ignore it. Ignoring the text wrap will allow the words to flow right over the image like it wasn't even there. This is the difference between that image being part of the flow of the page or not. Web design is very similar. In web design, page elements with the CSS float property applied to them are just like the images in the print layout, where the text flows around them. Floated elements remain a part of the flow of the web page. So what do we use floats for? Well, the CSS float property was originally for floating images inside blocks of text. Then developers realized that they could use the float property to create multiple column layouts on web pages. This became one of the most commonly used tools for creating these multi-column layouts. Now it's more common for us to use Flexbox or Grid, and the float property has returned to its original purpose. Let's check out how Float works on a web page. Here's the web page that we're going to begin working on. As you can see, I have a section, and within the section, I have an H1 and a paragraph that just introduce the page. Then I have an article. This article contains an H3 and a paragraph with an image inside of it. As you can see, there is a big open space to the right of the image, and this is the way that web design works by default. When we have block level elements, like these headings and paragraphs, they will stack on top of each other. This is how the page normally flows from top to bottom, one on top of the other. When we float an element, we take it out of the flow and we can have it sit to the left or the right of the page within the parent element. We'll go into our CSS and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a rule for example one image. What we'll do is we'll tell the image to float to the left. When I do this and we refresh the page, you can see how the image stays on the left and the text now appears to the right. The image is floating to the left of the page and the text is getting sucked up into this available space. Now, if we change the float to be float right, you'll see that the image now appears on the right and the text appears to the left. In theory, this looks like it's a great solution. But let's dig a little bit deeper. On my HTML page, I have some other elements and I've actually commented these out for right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uncomment out this third section just for a moment. I'll save my page and when we go back to the browser and we refresh, depending on the width of the browser, we may get some odd behavior. So at the current width, my page really looks fine. But if I resize the browser, you'll see that as the page gets wider, the image seems to hang outside of the paragraph. If the page gets more narrow, then the text is going to float around the image. Let's go back to this wider version and let's take the image and put it back on the left for a moment. If I refresh the page, you can now see we really get some strange behavior. What's happening is this image is floating to the left. It creates this available space to the right and any element is going to kind of fill in and sit within this space. I like to think of floated elements as almost having some sort of magnetic pull. So when we float to the left, they pull everything over to the left as long as there is space available. So when my page is more narrow and my text wraps around, these other elements are not affected. But if my page has more available space, any element that comes in contact with this magnetic pull of the float is going to be affected and sucked in to the float. Now let me show you visually what's happening a little bit more under the hood. I'll go back to my index page and I'm just gonna re-comment out this block of code and for now, I'm going to uncomment out this 
next section of code. I'll save my page and we'll refresh. And I have three divs. You can see that they each have unique classes and the first div is kind of getting pulled up next to our image of the fish. Let's just make this page a little bit more narrow for now. And I'm going to make some CSS rules for my new div elements. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to assign width and height to each of the unique div elements and give them unique background colors. The background colors all have some sort of alpha assigned to them. If we refresh, you can now see that I have these three divs that are different colors and by default they stack on top of each other. Now, if I go to one of these div elements, I'm going to go to the first one and I'm going to tell it to float to the left. When we save and refresh our page, you can see what happens. The underlying elements actually get pulled up underneath div number one. So div number two has space available. It gets sucked up underneath it. Now the text can't sit underneath it, so it gets pushed over here to the right. The same thing is happening with div number three. There is available space, so it is going to get sucked underneath here as well. If we go into our index page, and let's just add a paragraph after all of these. I'll save the page and we'll refresh, and you'll see that the paragraph text can't go underneath the div, but it does get pushed over and appears to the right. Now, if I go back into my CSS, and if I make a rule and set a background color on the paragraph element, and we save, you can see that the block element of the paragraph is actually going underneath div one as well. The text, of course, can't slide under it, so it's gonna appear to the right of div one. Now, if we go ahead and we add a float to all of the divs, Look what happens. I'm going to grab the float and cut it from D1. We'll attach it to the div rule so that all three are floated to the left. And now you can see what's happening. They will appear side by side in sequential order. The paragraph is going underneath all of them and then the text will just fill in where it can. If we change this to float on the right, the elements not only appear to the right, but the order becomes reversed. And the reason why is because D1 is the first element to float to the right, D2 is the second, and D3 is the third. Hopefully this allows you to visualize a little bit better what is happening. Now, if I make my page larger, like we had it before, you can see that our original floated element, the fish, is having an effect on the subsequent elements that are occurring on our page. Now, in order to prevent the image from affecting the content that follows, we're going to need to clear the float. We need to attach the clear to something in our web page. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a horizontal rule. This will serve as a visual separator, but I'm also going to attach a class and give it a class value of clear it. I'll save the HTML and let's go into the CSS and we're going to make a rule for the dot clear it class. We'll assign the clear property and we're going to tell it to clear both. With the clear property, you can have it clear right, left, or the most common way to use it is to clear both. This will clear a float in either direction and is the most flexible. If I save the page and we refresh, you can now see how our information that follows the article is pushed down. This clear is basically negating or preventing the floated element from affecting anything else on the page. If we go back into the HTML and I assign that clear it class to div2 and we save the page, if we refresh, you can see what happens. Div 2 is now no longer being affected by the float on Div 1. It now pushes down and appears in the normal flow. Now, because it is still floated, it will appear to the right 
and div3 is going to appear to the left of it. In this way, being able to clear items allows us to prevent this behavior from affecting other elements on our page. Let me show you in a more practical example. What we'll do next is we'll go ahead and we'll comment out this code that we were just working on. Lower down in the page, I have some additional code and I'm going to uncomment this out. Because I've already created an HR element, I'll just delete this one because we don't need to. This is simply an article with an H3 and it has three paragraphs that have images inside of it. If we save now and we refresh on the page, you'll see here is the new material. Because these are all block level elements, except for the image which is inside a block level element, everything is just going to stack vertically on the page. What I would like to do is I would like to make this page more interesting and utilize the space. I want my text to flow around the images. So we know that we can do that by using float. If we go back into the CSS and I go ahead and target example three images and we tell them to float left and we save, you'll now see that the text wraps around. But because of the behavior I just mentioned, there is available space and each of these items gets sucked up into the available space. If I resize my page and make my page quite small, the effect is not so detrimental. But obviously if my page gets a little wider, we start to have this weird stair stepping sort of effect. What I would really like to do is I would like to prevent this from happening. So what I'm going to do is in the HTML, each of the paragraphs is prefaced by an H3. I'm going to go ahead and attach the clear property to my H3s. Now I will just go into my CSS and I'll make a group selector with the clear it div and I'll just target my article three H3s. Let's save and when we refresh, you can see what's happening. Now the text is going to float to the right of the images and each set of H3 and paragraphs will stack on top of each other. Normally when you float images or other elements and you want other items to appear to the left or the right, you will add a margin or padding to the opposite direction of where you floated. So here I have a float left on my images. I am going to add margin to the right of 15 pixels. And if we save now, you'll see that I get a little bit of spacing between the images and the text, which makes this look much cleaner. As you can see, floating is going to cause the following sibling elements to expand and or shift up to fill the available space. It may also cause the floating elements to sit in front of other elements, blocking them from view. So you do need to be careful about floating. The way that you can rein floating in is you can use the clear. The clear property will prevent the float from affecting subsequent items. I know floating can be a little weird and strange when you first start to use it, but with practice, this is going to be an excellent tool for you to be able to use so that you can create layouts that are far more interesting than what we have seen up until this point.